something that you need to know at your fingertips are how binary numbers grow. So normally it's 2 to the powers of n. So it's something you should know at your fingertips, 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, and so on and so forth. So 2 to the power of 6 would be 64, for example. 2 to the power of 7 would be 128. 2 to the power of 8 would be 256. 2 to the power of 10 is 1024, which we normally call a kilo. So when you actually say 1 kilobyte, it's actually 1024 bytes, not exactly 1,000 bytes. And that's some, a difference there. And the 2 to the power of 20 gives you 1 mega, 1 mega. 2 to the power of 30 is a giga, and 2 to the power of 40 is a tera. So at least up to 2 to the power of you know, 10, you should know these values, what they stand for. Right. How do you convert a number, a binary number, to a decimal number? Well, it's, that's quite easy. Simply write down the numbers and multiply by powers of 2. The write down the binary number and multiply by the powers of 2. So, for example, we have a number 11100110. One, 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 zero, zero, one, one, zero. So, if you count as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 digits there, so the highest power will be 2 to the power of 7, to the, that's the leftmost, the most significant bit, we call it. So 1 times 2 to the power of 7, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 6, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 5, plus 1 times uh, 0 times 2 to the power of 4, plus 0 times 2 to the power of 3, and then plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1, plus 0 times 2 to the power of 0. And then you can work this out, and then the resulting uh, values you add up to give you the base value that you require. A few things you need to realize about uh, binary numbers is that you normally require very long strings of ones and zeros, and that can be difficult because, unlike you know a, a decimal number where you know you only need a few you know. Be, uh, positions to represent a huge number. In binary numbers, it's quite difficult, you know, because the strings can be very long. To represent a small number, you may need several bits to represent it. And recalling all these ones and zeros, you know, can be quite confusing. So you may need to do some simplification by grouping them. So there are two ways that have been proposed. You know, there's an octal that's using three bits to group or using four bits to group them, which gives it has a decimal system. Using four bits to group helps quite a lot, and it's quite popular because it actually simplifies a lot of things. So in the has a decimal system, in the octal system, you have the digital, I mean the values from 0 to, to, through to 7. In the has a decimal, you have the values from 0 through to what, 15, right? But uh, from 10, we then use alphabets to designate the numbers. So 10 is represented as A, 11 is represented as B, 12 is represented as C, 13 as D, 14 as E, and 15 as F, and then you come back to a zero. Right. So those are things that you should be conversant with, understand them well, and how to uh, do those uh, things. But we'll look at them a bit later. Now. How do you add, how do binary numbers add? It's quite interesting that at this age you have to learn to add zeros and ones. Of course, it's important. Yeah? So a zero plus a zero would always give you a zero. A zero plus a one gives you a one. A one plus a zero will result in a one. And a one plus a one, the answer is what? A zero, but you carry one to the next column. Okay. So just as you add a 1 to a 9, you get 10, you know, and it's a 0, then you carry a 1. In the same way here, if you add a 1 plus a 1, the resulting answer is 10. So you, it's 0, but then you carry the 1 to the next column. So let's look at how we can add uh, some binary numbers. What you see there are three rules of numbers. The topmost are the carries. Yeah, the, the middle one is a number is a, one of the numbers you are adding, and the bottom one is a second number you are adding. So the bottom two numbers are the ones we are adding. 
So we add the first one plus a one on the rightmost, which is the least significant bit. The rightmost bit is a what? Least significant bit. So a one plus a one gives us a zero, and we carry a one, which we write at the top. And then a zero plus a one plus a one we carried gives us what? A zero carry a one, which we again we write at the top. And then we add the three ones, so a one plus a one is a zero carry one plus this one is a one. Then we had a carry already. And then that one plus a one that is there gives you a zero plus a zero is a zero, but we carried a one. So the first one plus a one gives you a zero, a one which we carry. And then we add the three ones, we add the three ones which gives you what? A one carry a one which you put at the top there, then this one plus the one here is a zero, and then carry a one, which you then put here. So this is an example of how to do a binary addition of numbers. Now, you say, well, why am I learning to do these things? Well, it's important for you to understand, because it's exactly the same way the computer to do its own additions. So for you to be able to program the computer, understand what it's doing, you need to understand the language that it's speaking. And this is why it's important for you to know these ones. Uh, uh, subtraction is quite similar. Uh, yeah, so zero take away zero uh, is a zero. Zero take away one, well, will be a one and borrow one from the next column because you borrow one, yeah, because zero take away one, you can't do that. So you've got to borrow a one from the previous column, so that gives you a 10, and then if you take away 1, the answer will then be a 1. You know, a 1 take away 0 will be a 1, and a 1 take away 1 is a 0. What about multiplication? Right. Well, it's normal. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. Now, actually, multiplication is simply a shift, shifting things, you know. So, Let's look at how to multiply, uh, you know, uh, 13 by 11 in binary. So we first have to convert the 13 to as a binary number, which is 1101, and then we convert the 11 to as a binary number, which is 1011. So then you can multiply with the first one on the rightmost. So that's the 11, the one of the, the least significant bits. Well, if you multiply any number by 1, it's the same number. So you simply shift uh, right down the number. Now, if you're going to multiply the second number, it means you shift the position 1 to the left, 1 bit to the left. And then we write down the same number. And then multiply by 0, it means everything is 0. So, of course, you shift it. And then multiply by the last one. And then of all you then do is add the numbers. Now, division is quite similar. You know, to your long division, uh, which you should you know, go through this. Uh, I'll take your time to learn how to do that. Uh, and then, because it's the same. So now, how do we actually represent you know, signed digits? How do we represent signed numbers? Well, the question is, why do you want to represent them in the first place? You know, so for example, you have a 25 that's a plus 25, you know, or a minus 16, etc. cetera. You know, for you, it's, you understand, if I write 25, you understand that it's a positive 25. You know, if I write minus 16, you know, understand that it's a, it's a minus, it's a negative number. But how do we make a computer understand this things? Uh, so that, that makes it a bit difficult. The, the easiest way is to use one of the bits to uh, represent to stand for the sign of the number. And in this case, we use the leftmost bit to indicate whether it is positive or negative. We use a zero if there's a zero in the leftmost bit or the most significant bit, then we know it's a positive number. And if there is a one in that most significant bit, then we know that it is what? A negative number. We call this sign bit sign a magnitude representation of numbers. So what? Sign representation of what? Uh, uh, numbers. So you have a zero 
in the most significant bit, then you know that that's a positive number. And then if you have a, a, a one there, you know that it's a negative number. So there are three ways in which we can represent sign numbers. So there's a sign and magnitude, there's a one's complement, and then there's a two's complement. But in each of these cases, the leftmost bit indicates a sign, either positive or negative. You must understand and the difference between all these three forms of uh, representation. Right. How do you do one's complement? The thing is to complement every number. So you write down the number as it is and then complement it. What does it mean if you say you are complementing a number? You know, uh, in other ways, what it means is what you adapt to get to, the, uh, to, the, to zero. So if you have a nine, the complement of, if is nine, you know, the complement of nine, it's, I mean, it's one to get to zero, so that's 10, uh, and so on. So let's look at an example. Let's look at what's one's complement uh, of the binary representative of 75. To represent 75, you need seven bits. And then the additional bit you have to use for what? Uh, the sign. For 75, if you represent 75, it's 1001011, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, right? So that is a 75. The ones complement then will just be the inverse of all of those. So the complement of that will just simply be the inverse of that. So you have this one becomes a zero, you complement it as a zero. That one, you complement it as, as a zero. The zero becomes a one, the one becomes a zero. The two zeros become one ones, and that one becomes a zero, and that becomes a one. So that's simple. So it's just, you, you inverse them, that is all. Now, uh, to get the two's complement, you first write down the one's complement, you complement the number, and adding one to the least uh, significant bit. So for that 75, for example, having done this, to get the two's complement, all you do is add one to the what? Least significant bit, and you've done the two's complement. Something for you to consider, you know, is, well, so a few things for you to consider and find the answers to. Why are digital systems capable of greater accuracy than analog systems? Why are binary numbers used in digital systems? In a digital system, why are ones complement and twos complement commonly used to represent negative numbers instead of sign and magnitude? If the word length is four bits, what decimal number does 10002 represent in sign and magnitude, in twos complement and ones complement? These are things for you to think about. Thank you for listening or for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next session.